Up in the sky sits the flying man in a chair made of sun. All poised and ethereal, alone, with the whole world keeping him company. Far off, but present, he is submerged in chaos, but focused, eyes closed, but watching, listening for the faintest whimper on the strangest frequency that will give him the slightest clue that there's a job for Superman. Hello, I'm Edgar Miranda. There is no super heat vision. There's just heat vision. Just like there is no super x-ray vision or super flying. But there is super hearing. Because hearing is something we do. Superman just does it more. Or does he? When an object makes sound, what it does is vibrate. This vibration makes the molecules of the environment the object is in to vibrate in turn. First, the molecules right next to the object. Then those molecules move the ones right next to them and so on until this energy, which is a wave of sound, reaches you. The sound wave enters your outer ear, travels through your ear canal and reaches your eardrum, which also vibrates making a group of tiny bones in your middle ear called the ossicles to also vibrate, making the fluid inside the cochlea in your inner ear to move. This movement is detected by special cells within the cochlea called hair cells. Different sound frequencies will move the fluid differently, reaching different hair cells, which take this sensory stimuli and transform it into electrical signals that travel through the auditory nerve to the brain. To be interpreted as music, a cry for help, or an explosion. Having two ears, meaning sound being picked up by one ear, with a timing and loudness different than the other, although minimal, allows the brain to determine the direction the sound is coming from. This is how we hear. However, we don't hear everything, and what we do hear is relative. Generally speaking, the human ear can pick up sounds in the frequency range from 20 Hz, low pitch, to 20,000 Hz, higher pitch. And with an intensity which we subjectively register as loudness, starting from 0 dB, to 70 to 90 dB which start to get loud for most people, but safely for an amount of time to 140 to 160 dB, where we would be screaming in pain until our eardrums burst. But there are sounds below and above our frequency hearing threshold, known as infrasound and ultrasound. And there are sounds with an intensity below 0 dB, we just can't hear them, and above 160 dB, which we also can't hear, because at that point we have no eardrums. But someone with, say, invulnerability could. Also, have you ever heard this? I hate what Sheldon's supposed to be. Oh, he's the Doppler effect. Yes, it's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. It is said in a way meant to confuse you if you're not familiar with the concept, but it's basically this. The driver of the ambulance hears the siren like this all the time. While someone standing on the street hears something different. This occurs because the sound waves, as the ambulance travels towards the guy on the street, start piling together, because it is traveling forward in the direction of the waves while producing more waves. So more waves in a specific amount of time means the waves are more frequent, higher frequency. And when the ambulance passes you, the sound waves that reach you are more and more separated, because the siren is getting farther away from you. So the waves are less frequent relative to you, but since the driver is moving with the siren in the same direction and at the same speed, it is as if both were stationary. So in summary... I hate what Sheldon's supposed to be. Oh, he's the Doppler effect. Yes. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. <laughs> oh, sure, I see it now. The 
Doppler effect. Okay, now that we understand the very basics of hearing, what is super hearing according to what we've seen Superman do? What do you hear? Nothing. I hear everything. Hearing sounds within the human hearing threshold of frequencies, like a heartbeat or a conversation, but with very low intensity coming from someone's chest through flesh and bone, or from people talking from a long distance. Hearing sounds outside the human hearing threshold of frequencies, like a dog whistle, with standing super high intensity sounds, like the boom of an explosion, and being able to filter the frequencies and regulate the intensity of the perceived sounds. But considering all of this, is super hearing possible? I think, partially, in the realm of science fiction, but not discarding the rules we explained above, if a being's cells could be powered by the yellow sun to make his eardrums sensitive enough to pick up vibrations below zero dB and the ossicles powerful enough to amplify it to move the fluid in the cochlea and at the same time make the eardrums resistant enough to handle vibration above 160 dB and the ossicles capable of either passing through a cyst or dampen it and the hair cell density in the cochlea be higher allowing for concurrent reception of a wider threshold of frequencies and be able to transform these frequencies into electrical signals and the auditory nerve had the bandwidth to carry these numerous signals to the brain that must also have the capacity to interpret this extraordinary stimuli, filter it and regulate it at will in a hearing system that acts just like ours when not superpowered. Such being would have super hearing. That's a big if, but that's the fun of it. But, and also a big one, regardless of how sophisticated an alien hearing system gets when handling sound, it doesn't change the nature of sound itself before it reaches it. Unlike light, sound requires a medium to travel. So the famous scenes of Superman floating somewhere in Earth's atmosphere, listening to the world, are only possible in terms of super hearing. We will get to flight when we get to flight. If he's floating in one of the layers of the atmosphere where gas molecules are abundant enough to carry sound. And even so, there's the matter of the speed of sound and the Doppler effect. Meaning, by the time the sound reaches him, given that he's still able to pick it up with low intensity from far away, depending on where it comes from, it could be a while in the past. And if the object producing the sound keeps producing the sound while moving, his brain will perceive it with either a lower or higher frequency than the one it was emitted with. And of course, there's also the little detail of, will sound even reach that far? Ripples in a pond don't go on indefinitely. Viscosity in the medium will take away energy from the sound wave until it's fully dissipated. So Superman may get only part of the sound. Which brings up the question, could his Kryptonian brain make sense of only parts of the sound? That may or may not arrive, that he might or might not pick up with different frequencies depending on where he's at in relation to the source, into useful information. Like, what is that sound? Where does it come from? How long ago was it? Who knows? At the end of the day, you can have the most resilient science-based foundation, but once you cross that event horizon, anything goes. Because truly, who knows? At least we nerds can keep on speculating. I can't come into this room because of the kryptonite. Jimmy, I want you to try and kick it into the fireplace. Good boy, Jimmy.